Hi everyone, it's Miss Amanda from Livingston Public Library and I'm here sharing with you a story time. Before we begin, let's get rid of our wiggles. Wiggle fingers, wiggle so, wiggle high and wiggle low, wiggle left, wiggle right, wiggle fingers out of sight. Now there's no more wiggles left in me so I can sit as still as can be. Great job. Our first story is called Fiona the Hippo, written and illustrated by Richard Cowdery. Cincinnati Zoo, Hippo Cove. On a cold winter's night, a baby hippo was born. Have you heard? She's here already? Yes. I haven't seen her. Have you seen her? Alert baby hippo born. Her name was Fiona and she arrived earlier than expected. The zookeepers snuggled her and loved her and the whole world watched. There she is, really cute and kind of slimy, said Ostrich, as she and her friends peeked at the littlest hippo in the world. Fiona had to learn to eat from a bottle, just like the other babies in the zoo. And when she was ready, she let out a snort, wiggled her ears and said, I've got this. And burp, she did. Fiona grew stronger and it was time to learn to walk, just like other babies in the zoo. And when she was ready, she let out a snort, wiggled her ears and said, I've got this. And wobble, wobble, plop, she tried over and over until she did. Oh, have you had that happen when you're learning something? that you try and you try and finally you get it? That's a good feeling when that happens, isn't it? Little Fiona grew bigger still and it was time to learn to swim, just like other babies in the zoo. And when she was ready, she let out a snort, wiggled her ears and said, I've got this. And step by step, splash, she did. Fiona grew and grew and got stronger. And the animals at the zoo were so proud. Look at our baby, so roly-poly. When can she come out and play? But Fiona was busy. She was growing and learning about new things every day. Like bubbles. Oh, raise your hand if you like bubbles. Oh, I see lots of kids like bubbles. Me too. Oh, look at Fiona's face. I think she likes bubbles too. As the animals in the zoo watched and the zookeepers watched, the whole world watched Fiona too. Soon the little hippo had a mountain of fan mail that said, congratulations Fiona, you are amazing. We love you, little baby hippo. Wow. Then one day after she was done eating and walking and swimming, Fiona said, I want to be in the water with them. She looked at the two big hippos swimming in the pool. I want my mama and daddy. Fiona was finally strong enough to swim with her parents and she was ready. She let out a snort, wiggled her ears and said, I've got this. And she swam with her mama for the first time. Wow, will my teeth get that big? She asked excitedly. Fiona went swimming with her daddy too. Wow, will my bottom get that big? She giggled playfully. Oh, silly Fiona. Fiona loved her family and life was good for the little hippo. But something was missing. As much as Fiona loved her mama and daddy, she wanted something more. I wish I had some friends to play with, she said. Did you hear that? It's our turn to play with the baby. It's about time. And one by one, the animals joined their new friend Fiona for the biggest pool party the zoo had ever seen. Oh wow, that looks like fun. That night, Fiona snuggled up with her family. She was bigger, she was stronger, she was happy. And Fiona was loved. Go to sleep, little hippo, said her mama. Your next big adventure is right around the corner. As Fiona drifted off to sleep, she whispered, I've got this. And she did. The end. Yay! It's time for some counting. Usually we start with five things to count and we count down. But today we're going to start with one and count up. 
Let's see what I have to count. Oh, did you see elephant? Oh, good job. One elephant went out to play upon a spider web one day. He had such enormous fun that he called for another elephant to come. How many are there now? One, two. Two elephants went out to play upon a spider web one day. They had such enormous fun that they called for another elephant to come. Now there's one, two, Three. Three elephants went out to play upon a spider web one day. They had such enormous fun that they called for another elephant to come. How many are there now? One, two, three, four. Four elephants went out to play upon a spider web one day. They had such enormous fun that they called for another elephant to come. How many are there now? One, two, three, four, five. Five elephants went out to play upon a spider web one day. They had such enormous fun, and now my little song is done. Yay! Great counting! Time for another story. This one is called Through with the Zoo, written and illustrated by Bob Grant. Goat always dreamed of having space. He didn't want hugs or rubs or anyone near him. But Goat lived in a petting zoo. Goat looked out at the animals in the big zoo, so safe from the wild children. He would find a space out there just for him. He tried living with a clingy koala. Oh, look, the koala's sleeping on his back. He tried living with a nosy elephant. Goat tried living with many animals, but space was not an easy thing to find. Finally, Goat's search brought him to a lone tree. It was a quiet place that could be all his own. Goat had more space than he'd ever dreamed of, but was it too much? Oh, do you think Goat might be lonely? Maybe. He looked all around and knew that no one could get near him anymore. No little faces, no little hands, no little hugs. All that empty space was missing something. Goat never thought he would miss the petting zoo, but everyone needs a hug now and then. Whenever Goat wanted a little space, he knew just where to find it. The end. Yay! Those were some great stories. Now it's time for a song. Will you sing with me? Oh, wonderful! Let's sing The Wheels on the Bus. The wheels on the bus go round and round, round and round, round and round. The wheels on the bus go round and round all through the town. The people on the bus go up and down, up and down, up and down. The people on the bus go up and down all through the town. The wipers on the bus go swish, 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 swish. The wipers on the bus go swish, swish, swish all through the town. The horn on the bus goes beep, 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 beep. The horn on the bus goes beep, beep, beep all through the town. The babies on the bus go where, 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 where. The babies on the bus go where, 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 all through the town. The adults on the bus say, I love you, I love you, I love you. The adults on the bus say, I love you, all through the town. 
The doors on the bus go open and shut, open and shut, open and shut. The doors on the bus go open and shut all through the town. The wheels on the bus go round and round, round and round, round and round. The wheels on the bus go round and round all through the town. Great singing! Let's hear another story. This one is called The Year of the Tiger, Tales from the Chinese Zodiac, written by Oliver Chin, illustrated by Justin Roth. I chose this story because there's a holiday coming up soon. Did you say Lunar New Year? That's right. And the new year that starts is the Year of the Tiger. In the mighty jungle, the tiger slept each night. But tonight, excitement filled the air. A small cry rang out. Then catcalls joined it in a great celebration. The king and queen just had a baby. As the morning sunshine warmed the royal den, the cub yawned loudly. Roar! Oh, can you roar with the baby tiger? Let me hear you. Oh, good job! The queen whispered, Hush, my darling. Cuddling his newborn, the king chuckled. Theodore, you are a feisty chap. Soon this fur bull roamed the forest like it was his own backyard. His parents marveled at his curiosity. Teddy meowed, I'm becoming a big cat. The queen laughed, someday you'll be king of the jungle. Later, she advised, son, a wise ruler starts out as a careful prince. The king added, we've heard of dangerous animals called humans. Their houses and roads invade our land, so stay away from them. But this warning tickled the kitten's interest. I want to see these beasts for myself, gushed Teddy. He learned that people lived on the edge of the forest, so one evening he set out alone in that direction. After a while he came to a ridge. In the glen below were thatched roofs, dirt paths, and a person sitting in a field. To get a better look, Teddy sneaked down the hill and his striped coat blended into the tall reeds. The clearing of the short grass felt strange under his feet. Distracted by a rat, he gleefully pounced after it and snarled, Roar! Oh, can you roar too? Let me hear you. Roar! Good job! However, he startled the nearby ox and horse, which frantically galloped off. In the moonlight, the girl saw Teddy and froze in surprise. Sue screamed, tiger, tiger. The cat scampered into the trees, racing back to the palace, he thought. That creature was quite a fright. Meanwhile, the villagers searched for the intruder, but they found neither hide nor hair of Teddy. Sue, don't cry tiger when there isn't one, chided her father, Baba. At home, Teddy didn't tell his parents about his close encounter but he couldn't stop thinking about the girl. So early one morning, he returned to the town and spotted the barn where Sue fed the livestock. Inside, Sue served breakfast to the sheep and pig. Not wanting to scare anyone, Teddy said, good morning. Sharp teeth filled the tiger's smile. The animals squealed, run for your lives. Teddy sprang backwards into a haystack. Sue laughed since she, too, had thought of the tiger. You must be thirsty, she said, and poured a bowl of milk. Here, kitty, kitty. Intrigued, Teddy took a sip. Licking the bowl clean, the tiger purred, I'm Teddy. Oh, dear, did he spill the milk? Oh, silly Teddy. Rubbing her nose to his, she replied, I'm Sue. Do you want to play? Suddenly, Sue's mother opened the door. Teddy jumped outside to the woods beyond. Staring at the orange blur across the field, Mama cried, It's the tiger! Baba told Sue to stay inside with the dog. Remember, it's better to be safe than sorry. Then he and Mama left to warn the neighbors. Back in the jungle, the king scowled. Teddy, we know where you've been. You to we told you to avoid those people. The queen sighed. The outsiders have gotten too close. Now we must find a new home. Obediently packing his belongings, Teddy wondered, why are we afraid of them when they are scared of me? But still, 
but he still wanted to see Sue one last time, so he slipped away to the girl's house. As the tiger crept closer, the watchdog growled, Grrr, who goes there? Trying to be friendly, Teddy offered a paw shake. Hello there! Yet sharp claws popped out and the terrified pooch scampered off. Opening the doors, Sue asked, Teddy, why are you here? He blushed. My family is moving, so I came to say goodbye. Sue giggled. Oh, silly, you didn't have to. But a loud noise interrupted them. The dog returned with Sue's parents who yelled, There's the man-eater, get him! The tigers gave chase, and Teddy fled again. But unexpectedly, Sue followed her new friend into the wild. In the bush, the pair dashed ahead, and gradually squawks of birds replaced the roar of the crowd. Sue had never ventured beyond her farm before. With Teddy as her guide, she marveled at wondrous sights. Miles away, the queen wondered, where's Teddy? The king got wind that humans had entered the jungle. Immediately, they dropped everything and raced to find their son. On one end of the forest, Mama and Baba tracked Sue's footsteps. On the other, the king and queen caught Teddy's scent. Unaware of the two hunting parties, the girl and tiger innocently hiked along. The youngsters wandered towards a cliff where Teddy showed Sue the spectacular waterfalls. As she admired the lovely view, he saw his bright stripes, sharp teeth, and claws in a reflecting pool. Teddy always considered himself like everyone else. Now why did people dislike him for being different? Sue didn't mind at all. While he was lost in thought, Sue accidentally stepped on a snake sleeping in the grass. Oh dear. The serpent gave a loud hiss. Sue slipped on a stone. Tipping backwards over the ledge, she cried, help! Uh-oh. Shaken from his daydream, Teddy turned in disbelief. What could he do? Instinctively, the cat leapt forward to save Sue. Bounding into the chasm below, Teddy shouted, Roar! Oh, can you shout roar too? Oh, good job! Slowly opening her eyes, Sue was surprised that she had stopped falling. Instead, she saw Teddy's toothy grin. His strong bite held onto her as his claws clutched the dangling branches of a tree. With a mighty effort, the tiger dragged the girl up. They rested to catch their breath. Then Sue grabbed onto his tail, and Teddy led the way as they carefully climbed up. Hearing their children's voices, the worried parents rushed to them. Arriving at the same time, they saw Teddy pull Sue back to safety. Confused, each group warily kept their distance. The cat and girl knew what to do. They held their parents' hands and brought them together. Mama and Baba smiled. The king was puzzled. Dear, our little prince is growing up indeed, laughed the queen. Afterwards, each family invited the other over to play. Traveling between treetop and rooftop, the adults were amazed how well everybody got along. Good manners make good neighbors, they all agreed. Sue and Teddy enjoyed swimming and singing. They shared nature walks and bedtime stories. And in the jungle, both man and beast would recall that this was a terrific year of the tiger. The end. Yay! Time for a flannel board story. This one is called Lou at the Zoo. My name is Lou. I work at the zoo, feeding the animals. Can you guess who? Okay, I'm going to give you some clues. See if you can guess. He lives in trees and eats bananas. Who do you think it could be? Oh, that's a good guess. Are there other guesses? Okay, let's see. It's a monkey. Was that your guess? Good job. Should we do another one? Okay. My name is Lou. I work at the zoo, feeding the animals. Can you guess who? Okay, here are the clues. He has big ears and he eats hay. Do you have a guess? Let me hear. Oh, that's a good guess. Any other guesses? Oh, yes, maybe. Let's see. That's right, an elephant. Good job. Are you ready for another one? Here we go. 
My name is Lou. I work at the zoo, feeding the animals. Can you guess who? All right, here are your clues. He has a long neck and eats leaves. Can you guess? Oh, that's a good guess. Does anyone have another idea? Oh, let's see. Yes, you're right, the giraffe. Here's another one. My name is Lou. I work at the zoo, feeding the animals. Can you guess who? Okay, here are the clues. He's brown and eats berries. Any guesses? Oh, that's a good guess. Okay, does anyone have another guess? Oh, good thinking. Okay, let's see. Did you say a brown bear? Good job. Should we do another one? Are you ready? My name is Lou. I work at the zoo, feeding the animals. Can you guess who? Here are the clues. He hisses and eats mice. Okay, oh, I heard one guess, all right. Okay, good thinking. Do I hear another guess? Oh, good one, okay. Here it is. <gasps> Did you say snake? Oh, good job. Wow, those were some good guesses. Good job, everyone. My name is Lou, I'm through at the zoo. Now I'm going to sleep for an hour or two. <sighs> the end. Yay! It's time for our last story. This one's called Ellie, written and illustrated by Mike Wu. On a bright winter day, when Ellie was just finishing her lunch, the zookeeper came by with an announcement. Gather round, Walt called. I have some news. It is a sad day, he said. The zoo is closing. The animals were heartbroken. There must be something we can do, Ellie whispered to her, to her friends. The zoo is our home. Perhaps we can spruce it up a bit, Gerard suggested. Gerard always had good ideas. I'll prune the trees, Lucy said, nibbling a leaf. If only my trunk were longer, said Ellie. I'll move this rock, Gerard huffed, clearing it off the path. If only my muscles were bigger, said Ellie. We've already cleaned here, said the monkeys. What can I do to help, Ellie wondered. It seemed like everyone had a talent. Everyone but Ellie. Ellie thought she'd ask Walt to give her a job, but he was busy too. When the monkeys called him away, Ellie picked up the strange object he'd been holding. It had smooth wood on one side and prickly hairs on another. Do you know what she found? Did you say paintbrush? Ah, I think you're right. Ellie gave it a try. When Walt returned and saw her creation, he sprinted back down the path without a word. Ooh, what did she paint? Yes, a flower. Had she ruined the wall? What do you think? What do you think Walt thought when he saw that flower? Ah, oh, maybe. Let's see. Soon, she heard a wagon with a squeaky wheel turn the corner. Maybe Walt did like her painting. Oh, what did Walt bring? Yes, lots of different colors of paint. I see pink and blue, orange, green, yellow. Ellie added color here and a rainbow there. There were so many walls to color and so many colors to try. Ellie painted all of her friends. She painted the tallest ones, the smartest, and the quietest ones. Squeak! Word spread of Ellie's talents. Roar! Chirp! Ellie, the artist! People came from all over the city to have their portraits painted. Some came with balloons. Others came with awards. Ellie even painted Mr. Mayor with a smile. Soon people from around the world came to see Ellie, the remarkable painting elephant. Lucy hosted the crowds as they arrived at the zoo. Gerard led tours through Ellie's 
art gallery. And on a bright spring day with crowds cheering him on, Walt declared, we are open for good, thanks to Ellie. Oh, she saved the zoo. That's wonderful. Yay! What a happy ending. Those were some wonderful stories. I'm so happy I got to share them with you. Will you sing one more song before we go? You will? Great! How about if you're happy and you know it? Are you ready? If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it and you really want to show it. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet. Stomp, stomp. If you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet. Stomp, stomp. If you're happy and you know it and you really want to show it. If you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet. Stomp, stomp. If you're happy and you know it, shout hooray, hooray. If you're happy and you know it, shout hooray, hooray. If you're happy and you know it and you really want to show it. If you're happy and you know it, shout hooray, hooray. Yay! Great singing! See you next time!